from a Celtics angle on this, the first thing that I thought of was we were talking about this all summer long, like what would it mean if the Heat got him? And I almost feel like from a Celtics angle, it's worse that the Bucks got him. I know that Jimmy Butler and company just had that run to the NBA Finals, but now you have one of the most dominating interior forces in the NBA and Giannis to go along with Damian Lillard. Like Drew Holiday is a great player and we can get to him in a second here, whether or not the Celtics should put something together to try to go after him. But I just feel like this is worse for the Celtics that he went to the Bucks than him going to the Heat, which everybody assumed that would happen for a long time now. I disagree. I think oh, really? putting him putting him with Jimmy and and uh, Bam, I think with all the other stuff Miami has and their ability to keep getting guys, you know, from a Milwaukee standpoint, this just felt like a, a Giannis Hail Mary. I'm not sure it changes their long term destiny because they're still a pretty old team. And defensively, you know, they they couldn't stop Miami last year in the playoffs and now they just got worse. So Dame's going to have to be like a spectacular score for them. It's, it's somebody that I think the Celtics would match up with pretty well in a playoff series because they have multiple guards to throw at him. And, um, you know, I, I think that's a really nice matchup for Derek White. It's funny. You led with what this meant for the Celtics from the Dame standpoint. I immediately went to the Drew. I'm an only child. I'm a Boston fan. I'm going to immediately just think about my team in general with this stuff. But I just immediately went to could Drew come to the Celtics because Portland's not keeping them. Um, you know, they made a terrific trade and it's going to be an even better trade when they parlay Drew into whatever he's worth. And Drew's going to be attractive to a contending team. He's got a year left on his contract. Um, he's pretty tradable, right? It's not like he's making 50 million a year. So, you know, the list of teams that could go after him that would want a guy like him is not long. And for the Celtics, they have the Brogdon contract, which, you know, that situation is a disaster. And we haven't even heard from him yet. They have a bunch of picks. They have a bunch of second round picks. And it seems realistic to me that they could get him without touching Derek White, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Rob Williams, or Porzingis. And if you can do that and you can add Drew Holiday to the nucleus that they have, I would actually, then I would think they're legitimately the favorite. Because if you have a White and Drew backcourt and how flexible that is, and you can switch on everything now with Tatum and Brown and then the centers, um, that's that's huge. And they have the pick swaps and the picks and um, and the contracts to make a trade. And I think that's what Portland wants. Portland doesn't want to be good next year. They don't want Drew Holiday. You know? So they want to turn him into assets. Boston has the assets. Yeah, and I think it's a good point, too, on the Derek White thing, especially if they can add Drew Holiday as well, because then Dame's in real trouble trying to go up against those two guys for 48 minutes. And I think one of the underrated parts about Lillard is his postseason resume, like people look at the buzzer beaters and whatnot. I remember back to 2019 when he got completely outplayed by Steph Curry without Kevin Durant. And Damian Lillard's numbers in the postseason, like the field goal percentage, the three-point percentage, it's way down from what he's done in the regular season, but to the point on Drew. So if you look at sort of what they could possibly offer the Celtics and the Clippers are a team that we know that was in on the Brogdon sweepstakes originally, so maybe they could get into it. But a couple of other things that I was looking at in terms of some deals that could probably, if you were just going to do one straight up where basically it's Brogdon and Rob, Rob being the young piece, I don't know how appealing that is to Portland because they just picked up Aiton. So I don't know if they I want I don't think Rob. it is. Yeah. yeah. I think it so, could, but I think you can do Brogdon and patch together a couple contracts and do it that way, right? Yeah. And I also think you could do it with some other teams. Like if you added the Clippers into this, like as I was mentioning with the Brogdon situation, if the Celts could trade for Holiday, the Clippers get Brogdon out of that deal and Portland gets... Marcus Morris is, yeah, yeah, just Marcus two Morris, inspiring spec. Yeah, and picks. And the Celtics would have to probably send out Robert Williams in that deal as well, or a couple of other contracts just to make the money work on their end for bringing in the... Well, wait a second. I, I, I'm not excited about sending out... Ro I know Robert Williams, it's fashionable to just say, we can't trust this guy. We yeah. don't know if he's ever going to be healthy during a playoffs, but he's still pretty young. Like, to me, he's not a throw-in. Now, if it's like... That's the price for Drew Holiday is Brogdon and Rob. You got to consider it, especially because you still have Horford, you still have Porzingis. But I really feel like you can get Drew in the in 
you know, they're going to be competing against Miami, which is another piece of this, right? Because right. Miami can still do they and maybe Hero's not in the trade, but Lowry could be in it. Lowry plus a shitload of picks, and maybe they throw in Jovic and basically eighty percent of what they're going to pay for Dame anyway. Maybe maybe Drew's the guy, and that scares me more than anything because Drew is like the perfect Miami Heat guy. You know, yeah. and that's somebody that I would not want to see in a series. And if you remember, like he did really well against us a couple of years ago. Yeah. In that in that series against Boston that they ended up winning. Yeah. Well, it took Tatum a couple of years to adjust to him, like because yeah. now Tatum can just overpower him. But him and Lowry in the past have given Tatum issues in terms of like they would just get underneath them and take the ball away. But Tatum, as the years gone on, he's got better against those smaller well, defenders. Now, now it's now it's Superman Tatum. <laughs> yeah. Now Tatum yeah. is 290 pounds. You're not going to with Drew, Drew Holiday. And I text you about big. that. I, 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 I got to tell you, stop deadlifting 495 pounds. I, yeah. I don't know any jack shooters besides Desmond Bain, but he has like T-Rex arms. The guy has like the smallest arms in the like league it. in terms of a length. I don't like it either. So the other thing I was thinking in terms of that is, what if you got really creative with this, where... Holiday comes to the Celtics. Don't trade and, Derek White. I'm going to hang up. No, no. I'm I would never trade him. All right. I told you trade you, Derek White, you, I'm out. I'm leaving. No, you come to the meetings, man. You come to the Derek White fan club meetings. I would yeah, never okay, trade great. Derek White. Right, so, so I make sure. I love Derek White. So Minnesota, how about they're trying to get off maybe this town situation where towns and to make the money work, towns and Horford go to the Blazers. You could obviously, you're Portland. You eventually flip Horford just to make the money work. Minnesota gets Brogdon and Sam Hauser in that deal. Towns ends up going to the Blazers. For Towns? Yes. Town, t- t- so Towns goes to the Blazers to help out that team that's got all these young guards. <laughs> I think you've just been fired as my trade trade machine advisor. I, Towns is worth more than that. I mean, Towns is 25 and 10 two years ago. I thought you were going to say... Towns to the Celtics, and I started to get really nervous where you were going with that. No, I thought about that in the summer, but then I decided against I don't, it. I do not think Towns in Boston would be a good idea. That like some of his histrionics would probably not go over well. The, the Minnesota piece is interesting for Drew. I mean, if you're talking about who would be teams that the Celtics are competing against for Drew, Miami's number one. Um, Minnesota, if if Towns was really on the table. Because, you know, I had talked about how much Towns and Lillard made sense just as the foundation of a trade. And um, right afterwards, a couple of reporters from Portland were like, Portland adamantly does not want Carl Anthony Towns. So they, okay. that, that clearly came from the Portland side. I yeah. don't think Towns has the greatest reputation, but maybe if it's for Drew Holiday, maybe that's, maybe that's a different um, whatever. The, the other one I was thinking was, is there a Denver possibility? And could Michael Porter Jr. with that big contract he has, but plays a position that Portland's not loaded in, would Denver even want to move off Michael Porter Jr. after some of the great stuff he did in the playoffs last year? But um, could that be, could you just be thinking Murray and Drew as a backcourt? Um, I don't think Denver, I personally don't think Denver will do anything. Um, another one would be Golden State. He's like the classic Warriors guy. They have the Chris Paul contract. Then they would. Then Portland would have to figure out what to do with Chris Paul, um, and then Toronto, I think, would be another one because we know they were kicking the tires on Dame. And could there be an OG and an OB? Drew Holiday basically flipped those dude, put him with Schroeder. Um, I think Boston, Boston, and Miami are probably the finalists for this. Philly doesn't have the picks. Philly could get Maxi involved, but I, they've been pretty clear they don't want to talk about trading Maxi. And then Brooklyn, I think, would be the other one. Because Brooklyn's got a shit, they have all those Phoenix picks. They have a couple Dallas picks, and uh, you know they they have the contracts they could put together pretty easily to make that move. Well, but now I, I guess the question: if the, if Boston got the got Holiday, would you feel like they're the prohibitive favorites? Yeah, I feel like they would leap in front of Milwaukee. So when, yeah. I think they still, as I said, I think Milwaukee right now. I mean, that's a great one-two punch you can have. I do wonder about Dame wearing down in the postseason, but if you can add. Drew Holiday to the mix, who's obviously going to be pissed off. He's a guy that helped them win a championship, has been one of the best defenders in the NBA for a long time. And if you can bring him here, that my concern now is if you if Drew goes to Miami, then I think you open it up again where now Miami looks maybe stronger than the Celtics, or at least you're a lot more worried about Miami. Because if you get Drew Holiday, I think, and I know Miami can always do something down the road, you basically eliminate Miami. It feels like, okay, if you get Drew Holiday into the mix, 
and that Celtics team, knock on wood, gets to the postseason healthy, I feel a lot better about that group compared to where they were a year ago. But the other thing I would say about Miami is I'm interested. Is Portland going to want to do business with Miami? Because they didn't like, and I know it's a totally different player now, but obviously those negotiations didn't go well. Like that offer was out there forever. And maybe it's just, hey, they didn't like Hero because they had plenty of guards. But what changes about that now? Like if Miami's going to pull that deal off, they would have to get a third team involved, right? That likes Hero because that's sort of like the main piece in the deal. And clearly we talked about this for months that Miami didn't like that piece originally. So if I'm the Celtics, like I'm trying to do this as quickly as I possibly can, like to try to get Drew Holiday in the building because... You know that Miami, now this is what they do, right? This is the next, not that Drew Holiday's a superstar. He's not even close to Lillard in terms of his reputation in the NBA, right? In terms of the star power. But this is what they do. They're going to go after the next guy. So if I'm the Celtics and I look at this window right now, I really felt like Golden State two years ago was turned out to be the better team in the finals, but they let that one in some sense. They came undone right after that game four. Last year, you have the Tatum ankle injury in game seven. Maybe you still win and... I do think sort of an underrated part of that was Brogdon going down because he was one of the Celtics best players in the postseason, despite some of the stuff during the regular season where he didn't rate out in the impact metrics. He was great for them in the postseason. So that's two years in a row where you've been really close. And this is a guy that could completely swing things for you where you have your on ball defenders. I would say, based on what we saw last year from Marcus is you'd actually get an upgrade. After you lost Marcus Smart and the questions that we have about the backcourt, you actually upgrade there. And then you have White, you have Drew Holiday on the wings. You still have Tatum, who I believe is going to be all first-team defense this year. He brings it every night on that side of the ball to go along with Jalen. And then this new wrinkle that you have in Porzingis, to me, this becomes unequivocally the deepest team in the league. Now, obviously, you would have to see what's going on out west with Jokic, and that team's just a machine. But Drew Holiday is the piece to me that puts them over the top. And the fact that Damian Lillard ended up going to Milwaukee and Miami, I do think this makes the path at least smaller for the Celtics, like the teams you'd be concerned about if you could get Holiday in the building. 